Our video cladding shows you how to install cladding. This video shows you how to measure the cab so that a metal fabricator can make the parts you'll need. We're going to start with a strike jam and do a quick drawing of what it looks like. Do a top view showing all of the bends. It doesn't have to be to scale, but it does have to be enough that the fabricator can see what you need. Remember that the new cladding doesn't replace the old cladding. It gets applied on top of the old cladding. As a result, the measurements you take across the front of the existing cladding give you the size of the measurements for the back of the new cladding. To avoid confusion, however, add ID, inner dimension, behind any measurement that gives the metal shop the finished dimension across the back of the new cladding. Use OD, outer dimension, behind any dimension that is the finished size of the front of the new piece. We'll start by measuring this edge. It has a rounded corner, so to get an accurate measurement, measure from the wall to a square placed across the adjacent face. Measure in several places along the wall to see if there's any variation. This dimension ends up being an inch and a sixteenth all the way up the wall. Write it down and then work your way around the drawing. As you're measuring, remember that metal doesn't have any give to it and allow yourself a little leeway. If a piece wraps around another piece, like this one does, make the face a bit wider to allow for glue and an easy fit. Or if a piece fits between two walls, it's better to make the piece a bit short so that it doesn't scratch a neighboring wall as you try to force it in. This face measures six and a half inches all the way up the wall. We're going to mark it down as six and nine sixteenths, a size that should fit nicely and won't fight us going on. The best way to figure out the length of any piece is in two steps. First, you go from the lowest level, the carpet, and measure up a nice even 50 inches. Then measure down from the canopy to the mark. It's another 46 and a sixteenth inches in this case. The initial 50 inches plus another 46 and a sixteenth gives us a total of 96 and a sixteenth inches. But we can afford to make this a bit short because the top edge will be hidden by the ceiling, so we'll put down 95 and 7 eighths for the total height. It's better to take some measurements once you know exactly how the cladding is going to sit. For now, we're not going to worry about measuring to notch the strike jam to fit around the transom. We'll just take the measurement all the way to the top. We're also not going to worry about the location of the lanterns. We'll take care of them once we have something solid to work with. Make a note on the bottom of each drawing telling you the cab location, job number, and the part name. Have your supplier mark the pieces the same way so you'll know where they go once they arrive. Moving on to the transom, start the same way, with a picture. It's a two-speed opening which of course has a stepped opening, and each step has a return on it giving us a side view that looks like this. Here's the view from the top down, where you can see the steps. Begin by drawing a line where the doors meet. Measure from the line over to get the total length. Once again, you want to give yourself a bit of leeway. Rather than risk scratching the buck in the strike jam during installation, make the piece a sixteenth of an inch short of your measurement, and in this case, enter 43 and 15 sixteenths. Our finished drawing looks like this. To avoid any confusion on a piece like this, we also draw an isometric so the supplier gets a good overall view of how the piece goes together. There are only two more pieces to measure. There's the buck and there's the giant flat that we're going to put against this wall. Start with a drawing. Note that we're still marking the measurements as inside dimension to avoid any confusion at the suppliers. The last piece we need to measure for is a giant flat for the return wall. Mark the grain direction so you don't end up with a piece that has grain running parallel to the floor. We already know from measuring our buck that this piece should be 95 and 3 quarters tall. The width ends up being 14 and an eighth at the bottom, but a little narrower at the top, about 14 and a sixteenth. In order to make that work, we'll mark the whole thing at 14 and a sixteenth. With that, you've made all the measurements you need for cladding. Talk to your vendor before you start. There may be a special form they'd like you to use. For information on installing cladding, see the cladding video.